thank you so much, uh, Daniel, for introduction. So my name is Ken Nakagaki. Uh, this is Artem Dementiev. Uh, we are presenting together. Uh, we are both from MIT Media Lab. I'm from Tangible Media Group, and he's from uh, Responsive Environment Group. Uh, Responsive Environments Group. Uh, for the co-author, we have Sean Former from Stanford University, uh, Joe Paradiso, Hiroshi Ishii from uh, which is uh, the director for our groups. Okay, so um, as shape changing interface being one of the uh, major realm in the field of HCI, uh, researchers have been exploring how they can uh, have a variety of transformation uh, capabilities in uh, different geometries and scales. Also when uh, creating uh, interactive applications with these interfaces, making the system scalable is one issue, uh, especially when these system requires external sensors or projection system. So these methods uh, for t high transformation capability and an IO integrated system for enabling scalability are a challenge for these research. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when we look at this daily material, you can find these uh, linear shaped material such as strings, wires, tapes, um, and they have these, the potential uh, of these aspects of, for shape changing interface because line can transform from line to surface or more complicated solid. And also, uh, we use this material. Uh, we use this material as a hands or craft material that we can really cut, separate, and not. So, which has has much really like a scalability in the uh, uh, the own nature. So, inspired by this um, um, linear uh, material, such as string or tape, uh, we imagine uh, in this research we are imagining this material that can transform uh, and it change shape, but you can also really customize the length or the configuration using a hand. And, uh, and this system really integrates uh, uh, rich input and output, output that detects input from human, but also provide uh, uh, shape, shape transformation or a visual feedback. And we present a variety of applications uh, enabled by this advanced hardware design. So in last year's WIST, uh, we presented line form uh, to start exploring to use the shape of uh, line as a shape changing interfaces. In this re uh, res uh, research, uh, we uh, made this uh, early prototype based on the snake robotics and uh, pro uh, try to define the interaction design with the line based material. Uh, in this paper chain form, we introduced the new advanced version of a uh, 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 prototype and which has uh, customizability and the rich input and output. And we try to expand this uh, interaction design with the uh, line-based interface line form and uh, using the uh, main feature of customization and really trying to uh, affect other ways of interaction with it. So obviously this is uh, evolution of line form which I presented last year. But actually there's another uh, uh, important project I want to mention here. Uh, sensor tape was presented by Artem in last year's WIST as well. And so sensor tape is about a sensor network on the form factor of tape, which is really customizable that you can cut or reconfigure. And after last year's, year's WIST submission, uh, we found out we were doing projects that has similar uh, form factor and the design principle. Although we are in a different group in MIT, uh, we were inspired by each other and collaborated to work on this chain form. Uh, which is uh, a combination or marriage uh, of the two research projects to go beyond each other. So I would like to appreciate this uh, WISC community for this extended research op opportunity driven by the submission and present presentation of WISC. Uh, we are very happy to present this work, bring back in this year's WISC. Uh, so related work. Uh, as for, um, so various uh, line-based inter. Uh, interface in both passive and active system uh, has been proposed to utilize the tangibility of line to intuitively uh, interact with digital information. Uh, but these interfaces were not able to split or customize the length and the number of modules. Or <coughs> Sorry. Uh, in, also in the field of uh, robotics, uh, various modular robots or uh, snake robot system have been proposed. These systems are designed to reconfigure into uh, various shapes to adapt in dynamic uh, environment for uh, locomotion and exploration. In chain form, uh, our focus is rather on utilizing these robotics technology uh, for human interaction, especially leveraging the customization capability. 
Uh, lastly, uh, there are a variety of modular systems for both passive and actuated interactions. And these systems allow uh, users to develop virtual uh, data or shape changing data without having effort on engineering or pro programming skill. And Chainform system also contributes to this research uh, stream with uh, uh, relatively small modules which has richer I.O. integrated functionality. Uh, so uh, Chainform, in this uh, research, we implement a modular shape changing interface uh, system based on a linear configuration with rich input and output functionalities. And we propose wide range of applications for both uh, shape changing computer interfaces and the actuated uh, prototyping tools. And we intend to expand the design space of the interaction for actuated curve interface or line form with the advanced uh, hardware design. And uh, we also try to lower the uh, barrier to prototype shape changing interface applications with its uh, customizable linear and integrated system. So uh, what can Chainform actually do? So these are like the, uh, the overview of what one module can do. It can sense uh, human input such as touch or uh, deformation or angular deformation or it, can, it has several actuations that can transform, shape, change shape, change angle, and also provide uh, visual feedback. And most importantly, uh, it's, it is really customizable. Uh, just like uh, wires or string, you can cut or separate, or knot or connect together, and really, you can really uh, rearrange or reconfigure the shape, and also you can attach to other materials with the relatively small size of the device. So next, I would like to uh, go to deep in the implementation, how we built it. Uh, as for the system overview, the system is composed with the, uh, the chain form modules and the microcontroller, which is we, we use TNC, uh, that communicates with the computer. And for computer, we use a Mac OS, and it runs the software uh, with uh, processing or C++. And uh, that the, each module is composed with uh, uh, multiple parts. Um, so it is basically based on a commercial servo motor, which we found it, uh, the, which is, was the smallest we found in the market. And we designed the uh, 3D printed bracket and this custom, custom PCB. And this custom PCB has a flexible hinges so that it can wrap around these uh, brackets. Then, so it's, it's actually like, you know, servo motor, uh, adding a microcontroller on top for the intelligence. So they have this capability of, additional capability of input and output and uh, customization. And we also designed the, uh, uh, once we have one, we designed the joints to have uh, multiple uh, uh, joints that you can connect in the series. And we also designed 3D joints that trans, uh, enabled 3D transformation and also uh, use a cable to uh, give a power and communication. And I would like to pass to Artem for the technical detail. Uh, so we designed the circuit board which contains both uh, rigid and flexible parts here so you can wrap around this, uh, the servo motor. Um, so here you can see we had the flexible hinges um, and, um, and we had a, a microcontroller which was uh, the IT Mega 328 microcontroller and a capacitive uh, touch in, uh, controller it was on the right side. Um, on the other side of the board, we had um, um, the surfaces, which were capacitive sensing surfaces. So one of the layers of the board had um, a touch surface. So we had a total of six of them. And uh, we had a LED array, which were um, eight NeoPixel LEDs. So we can have a display. And um, there was two connectors on the right side, which were... Um, which were to connect to the modules to the left and to the right. Um, so here is the, our communication architecture. Um, we use the combination of peer-to-peer um, -peer network to so the modules would have a unique address assignment using the peer-to-peer -peer communications, and um, the I square C bus was used for um, the main communications to the computer and um, from the computer. Uh, here is some technical specs. So we had a bandwidth of about 170 kilobits per second, and that was uh, linearly proportional with the number of modules. This was the maximum bandwidth. 
Um, we had a latency, which also was increased linearly with the number of modules, so about two milliseconds per module. So we would have um, about one frame delay for um, for like about 20, 20 modules. Um, the power consumption was about 82 milliamp hours for uh, one module, and this is when the motor is running, so it's usually a lot lower. And um, the maximum number of modules was um, that we calculated was 32, and this is based on um, on the voltage drop between the different between the modules, and um, uh, and that was also in turn determined by the resistance of the wires and the connectors and um, how much um, current each module consumed, and the torque uh, um, of the servo motors were 0.8 kilograms per centimeter. Okay, uh, so next we'd like to talk about the application. Uh, so in our paper, we presented various kind of applications, and these applications can be divided mainly into two. Uh, one is the dynamic and adaptive computer interfaces, and another one is the prototyping tool for actuation and interaction. So I would like to start from the first one. Uh, as the uh, dynamic input interface, uh, this can provide different uh, uh, affordance for different functionality. So, for example, for CAD modeling uh, software, uh, it can be a line that enables you to control the vector data, and it can transform into a surface to provide a, a surface as a, like a color picker. Uh, but more interesting for only for a chain form is you can also like uh, split two de uh, devices one long device to two and you can have a multiple uh, interfaces such as a slider or rot rotation and you can also think about uh, making other ki different kinds of uh, uh, in input interface such as like a, a gun shaped controller with haptic device or multi degree of freedom uh, joystick and uh, uh, next application is a shape-changing stylus. Uh, with the density of touch uh, sensors on chain form, uh, the system can recognize how the user is grasping the device. So uh, using this functionality and the relatively small size of the hardware, uh, we pr prototype this stylus device, which recognizes the way you grip, then transform the effector of the uh, stylus. So uh, our familiarity way of uh, grasping tools with uh, pro we will provide different shapes on the end effector, uh, which utilize our physical sense of using the daily tool. So uh, another interesting application with chain form is definitely this reconfigurable display using LED arrays on each uh, uh, module. And this small display, display can transform dynamic, dynamically according to the function or application on the for example, smartphone. So usually, uh, when people talk about flexible or f reconfigurable display, they always talk about paper or plain shape, but uh, uh, we believe that uh, the form factor of line has much more uh, transformation capability, and although our implementation is still low resolution, it has lots of limitation for the shape, uh, but I think it's really interesting to look at the direction of for shape changing displays. And also this uh, display functionality, you can imagine like combining two. Maybe you have this uh, smartphone made with chain form, come with, uh, combine with your friend, then you have like a larger screen, maybe to play a game together or you know watching movie together or something. So yeah. Then uh, next application is the prototyping tool. So just like you know, children or makers or designers use wires to create uh, various shapes or objects, user can use ChainForm itself to create some kind of uh, prototype in, uh, interactive, which is interactive and shape chain and by uh, customizing and rearranging the shape of the chain form. And also, again, uh, the relatively small size enable, uh, size of the chain form enable people to attach to other material to animate. So you can really uh, think about this as like a, a skeleton for uh, physical material, or you can also utilize the uh, LED. So together with the uh, shape, you can also add the visual uh, feedback to add like the emotion to these guys. So not only uh, you know surface or paper, but you can also think about uh, uh, weaving this into uh, other physical object, complex objects such as puppet, or some you can maybe make a, a prototype locomotive uh, objects as well. 
And we believe the uh, customization aspect of Chainform really matches uh, with the body augmentation direction. Because each of us has a different shape and size of the bodies, um, uh, we can imagine using this system to, for example, haptic device or maybe uh, uh, help elderly people to grasp something. But it's really personal that you can customize by yourself. Or you can maybe make some kind of you know, posture correction tool for yourself because I think everyone here is too much you know, working hard in the office. Anyway. <laughs> so that was uh, 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 two main applications we were imagining. So uh, as for conclusion, we developed uh, this hardware, advanced hardware, that has, uh, is uh, modular, but also has a rich uh, I IO functionality to enable lots of different applications, uh, especially for shape-changing uh, applications. And we uh, develop uh, or expand the interaction with uh, shape-changing line or line form, uh, like uh, interface, with this uh, rich uh, functionalities. And, uh, at, and we uh, propose a wide variety of applications for both computer interfaces and uh, uh, prototyping tool for uh, animated and uh, interactive objects. As for future work, uh, you can see our prototype is still in really early stage, that there's lots of uh, things can be done for improving uh, the hardware design. For example, LED surface can be wrapped around all, all around four or six surfaces, or the joint design, the joint can integrate both the mechanical and the electrical uh, uh, connections. And, uh, and also we are uh, uh, interested in doing workshop, doing some kind of user study, because our uh, main feature of customization, uh, uh, we think there's once we give to makers or children, we would like to see how they people make, what they people make. And we also, uh, in, in our current system, uh, the UI for making these interactive objects is not really ready yet. So I think uh, this software to improve uh, the, let people make lots of different things is uh, key. And we also think, uh, because robotics people do lots of self-assembly robots, while we are, this chain form is only manual assembly, and we also think like that would be a really interesting thing to see once we have self-assembly, how that can be uh, changed, uh, how that can change the uh, human interaction-wise. And uh, also we think uh, various types of modules can be added to expand the possibility of the interface. So in, as for more further future, as we showed the uh, image in the be beginning, we imagine this uh, chain form-ish material to be really accessible in a, like a roll, just like cable or tape or those kind of thing. And you can really use, use this and to make uh, interactive objects in daily life. And you can also think this becomes much thinner with the more like maybe like a material science uh, technology improving or something that you can create more uh, complex shapes such as knitting or even create 3D shapes just like this uh, loom from Lexus. Okay. So here I would like to finish my talk and uh, I would like to have your question. And we are going to do a demo this evening, so please come. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for a couple of questions. So if you have a question, raise your hand and one of the SVs will come to you. Uh, hey, that was a really cool talk. Um, I, I had one question about sort of the push and pull between uh, sort of identity and modularity. Um, on one hand, each of these components is supposed to be interchangeable, but on the other hand, when you program them, you give them each an individual functionality. And I'm wondering if that sort of makes it confusing for the designer because uh, they're not sure which one they're programming at any one time, and how, how might you um, overcome that? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question. That's definitely uh, interesting. And um, yeah, so we also found that it's really, you know, still the input and output is still like two and two. And uh, 
while other prototyping tool, such a li little bit, has a lot of uh, possibility for this. But we are also, like, uh, during our prototype, we were kind of amazed that how this small module can also have lots of input and output. So it's kind of give and take. And I uh, as I said, I think this, maybe this change, this is like the basic uh, platform, but uh, maybe if you want to add more like a camera, maybe you don't need it every time, but maybe sometime you want. So, uh, but, uh, and maybe that can be the extra module, but because our focus was really much on the tangible interaction, we wanted to have this, uh, you know, uh, touch input and deformation, those kind of stuff. So it's, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Thank you. We have time for one more question while the next speaker sets up. Well, if there isn't, uh, can you let set up? So in the meantime, I'd like to ask you a question, uh, which is, um, so you talked in the future work about different vectors that you could take to kind of get to the next version or to your ultimate goal. Uh, for example, in this version, you can see that you have low res both on the physical element, but also on the output, like on the display side. Where are you planning on taking this next? Well, so, yeah, so in like this last line form and this chain form, um, we really, you know, what we did was like expanding the possibility, expanding the possibility. And I think uh, some of the, so differently for the chain form application, we were really interested in like the workshop, up, uh, doing workshop and see how, people really make using this. But for more practical application, we feel like the body uh, constraint or augmentation is uh, more uh, 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 interesting to see. Uh, and, uh, but still, uh, this, our hardware, current hardware is really limited that it's really heavy for body. So I think like maybe we can use like a pneumatic tape that is really light that can but sense and actuate at the same time. But you can really wrap around and do lots of customization for body. Thank you very much.